Call on this walking box being hot. <clears throat> Interesting, the old little Inkbird thermostat I put in there a million years ago is still working. It sounds like it's low on charge. Um, let's get the ladder up on the roof and take a look at this thing. Uh, the coil doesn't seem too bad. We're not iced up, uh, it doesn't feel too dirty. So let's take it to the roof. See what we get into. Alright, let's see what let's see what shape Tippins is in. He's like, well, not all the way tipped over. We'll call that one okay. Yeah, hang in there. Let me get some gloves on. We'll get the extension ladder and we'll get up there. All right, I got the cover off the unit. We put this compressor in back in 2017. It takes about three pounds of 404. Uh, it's definitely low on charge. 29 on the section. Now, if you guys come across these gauges, this is a pressure control, not a thermostat for restaurant owners or new technicians. And that's showing what this transducer is reading right here on the low side. And it's going to show your low side pressure. And at 29 PSI, the box at 50 degrees, we're low on charge. Uh, you can see the sight glass is bubbling. You can see that up there. See if I can zoom in. We're definitely low on charge. I think since they got product in there, I'm going to try and top this thing off real quick. And then we'll go for a leak check. Um, this is the job where I installed the evaporator coil, where I had the video where I lost my Super Tech badge. We'll have to check the date on that video. I'll look for it and see how old that evaporator coil is and see if that evaporator coil is a leaker. That's the usual suspects. I don't see anything out here too obvious. I think we did that condenser fan motor one Easter morning. So I didn't get to stay, I didn't get to hang out with the kids. I had to come up here and change that. I remember that. It's always good to get these cleaned out. I'm gonna wash that coil too. Get the get the scuzz off the back of that motor so it can breathe. Let's go ahead and uh we got these little guys going. Still stoked on these little buggers. Mm, get some. Cycle the gauges to 404A. That was the beeping that you heard. Up on there. Yeah, we're within uh, within one psi of the transducer reading and the gauges. So that's reading at 30, and that's reading at 29. So yeah, these are pretty good. I'm gonna grab some 404, we'll get this topped off. And then I'm gonna, cause I want that box to get cold. It's Sunday, Sunday afternoon. They got product in it. I need to get the product cooling and then we'll do the leak check. All right, so we know the box is at 50 degrees. Probably gonna end up with an evaporator temperature of 30 or 35 degrees cause the box is hot. I went ahead and I purged this out. And we'll, add, we'll start adding a little bit of gas. Sometimes I like to just go in little increments. I know that there's not a lot of charge on this unit because the total charge is three pounds, 13 ounces. So I just go give it a little squirt, let it hold off. 
Um, I might need to get a flashlight on that side glass. Let's see. Yeah, now you can really see the bubbly, screw bubbles. And the trick is, is it won't take long for it to come up, so you don't want to keep adding. Like, see the the evaporator temperature is already 25.7. The outside pressure is at 63. This is 404A. It's not going to take much or take long for this thing to clear up. And the thing is, you don't want to overcharge it, right? So I get a little squirt, and I'm going to let it hang out for a minute. Okay, it's really close. let it hang out for a minute here before I give it another squirt. Get one more squirt here. Sometimes I'll just take the gate, I'll just take the valve, oh, back seat it, and then front seat it. Little squirt. Little add squirter. to run and settle. So it might take a minute for the TXV to adjust and your sight glass will clear up. See, look at that. Two squirts and we're almost there. Not much, but enough to where the box wasn't cooling. Fight the battle for a minute. Twenty-four So I'm feeling pretty good about that. I'm gonna flip this up, close my tank off. I'm gonna suck out what's left in that hose into the system much because these are short hoses. I'm going to close off my ball valve. Close that off. I'm feeling pretty good about that. And we went from what, 2930 to about 62. This is saying 68. It's what I thought we would be at. Almost a 30 degree evaporator with the box as hot as it is. It's coming around. pressure control on this whatsoever. I think we're at a good spot where I put the gas away and I'll get the leak detector and we'll start sniffing. We should see the box, the box temp should start dropping. Let's check that. We'll put the gas away and we'll check the box temp. All right, just like that, the temp is dropping. We're down to 40, yeah, it was 44 degrees. I had the door open. Um, I'm going to go start at the roof with my leak check, but more than likely, life tells us these evaporator coils leak. 
And uh, shit, let's. We should look up the. Um, what year I put this in? I'll go to my channel and and I'm sure I'll find it. All right, box is pulling down. I got the H10 here. Let's go ahead and we'll kill this disconnect. We'll let the pressures equalize, all that fun stuff. And uh, the condenser fan stopped a little rough. We will check up here first and then we'll check the coil like I was saying. And I am gonna look for that date, but I'm in work mode right now. So let's, let's keep on this. And then we'll see when we put that evaporator coil in. All right, I'm letting the H10 warm up. There's a heater in here that needs to warm up for a minimum of two minutes. The longer you let it heat up, the better. And they do wear out and need to be replaced after time if, you, if you're not an H10 person. Um, visually looking, I don't see any. I was thinking this was an oil stain on the wood, but there's nothing oily. I don't see anything that was a rubber dooski. I don't see anything oily up here. Suction line sweating, that's normal. The condenser doesn't have any like oil stains on it. I was thinking that might have been one, but it's not. Just dirt. We're gonna wash the coil at the very end. There's some dirt around here. I've seen these things leak before. But Let's get this thing set up and give the top a sniff and then we'll check that coil. It's a nice little tick to it. of that sight glass. I've seen sight glasses leak before too. Nothing up in there. Transducer. I think at least my gauges would leak or something right here. Or at least this packing on this. 
Yeah. Stay out of the water. All right, I'm gonna take it to the evaporator coil for a sniff. All right, here we are. I actually wired in a switch on these so I could turn the fans off. <laughs> Good job, NorCal Dave. All right. Get this cover off. I always like to check this side first, the TXV side, because it's got the distributor and all that fun stuff. Okay. All right. I'm going to fire off the leak detector, then I'll get you guys up there. Oh, the return bins are looking pretty crusty. Speeding up, Skipper. Now she's slowing down. Oh yeah, speeding up. We got a leak right in here somewhere. Let's get the soapy bubbles. So there's no guessing. We know there's a leak up in there. Soap bubble time. All right, let me see if I can knock a bunch of this ice off. This is the one right in here that was giving me grief. I mean, let me zoom in for you guys. I think it's worth flowing some bird turd on. Um, it's this one right here where the bubbles are. Oh yeah, right there. There it is. That dude. Right there. That's the one that's bubbling that I could see right now. I don't really see any others doing it, but you know they're not far behind. That's my main leaker right there. So I go pump it down, shine this up, flow some bird turd, and see if that helps us out I don't think this one is a leak right there I got plenty of soap on it that's my leak and I double check this distributor those are notorious for leaking and I'm gonna double check the distributor right here I don't see anything leaking on that it's all leaking in the back back there that dude right there Yeah, that guy. 
that's my leak. I'm gonna try and flow bird turd on it. I'm gonna go up there and pump her down real good. And uh, pump her down real good and then flow some bird. We'll check this other side too while we're here. It'd be criminal not to. And see if we got any leaking on this side of the coil. Hang in there, let's all tune but right in. So I soaked up the whole backside. And none of these seem to be leaking. They all look good. Even though they're crusty, nobody's bubbling. No one's got a case of the bubbles. Because the leak is on the low side, you don't have to recover the whole charge out of this thing. You can pump this unit down by front seating your king valve here on your receiver. You get that all front seated. And I like to put the cap back on. A lot of times the packings on those will leak. Get it back on there with a little, just a little snuggy. It's probably gonna do the three pump out, right? One, two, three. Now it's gonna run. Remember the three pump outs built into the logic on the controller to get any possible liquid that might have migrated back to the scroll and look at pump down that fast. Um, short line run, small system. The pump down was super quick. Now I'm going to take this cover off, push the contactor in and pump it down uh, the rest of the way and then there'll be no pressure on the low side so I can make the repair at the evaporator coil and we'll go down and make that repair all right little sand cloth a little flux I got that little bugger cleaned up fluxed up and I'm gonna braise it and that's about it we'll give it a try all right I float a bunch of solder around there there it is looks pretty good got a good flow all the way around it you can pressure test it now. All right, I got this thing pressurized. That was my little troubler right there. Zoom in, right. Looks like we fixed it. So that's pretty darn stoked, stokeified. Let's double check that right there. Yeah, that's fine. got her so that's the fix on the weepy coil let's see if this is weeping that looks like some discoloration right there let's see if that's just frozen soap yeah that's okay so that's a fix on the obvious leak there will be more leaks on this no doubt about it there will be more leaks in the future but that's just like a band-aid for right now He's gonna have to get a coil for sure. Oh yeah. I think there's another little weeper. Maybe right there. Let's see. Am I seeing things? Let's check this right here. Yeah, there's another small one right here. Show yourself, you son of a beep. Right back there. That's another small one. I think I could patch that one up too. Yep, that's another small leaker se section right there.
for sure. Let's see if I get that little piece patched up too. And like I said, there'll be more. It's just, you know, you're just prolonging the inevitable. But it's something, it's something for the customer for the meantime. All right, I got that little bird turd sealed up on the bottom. He's looking a lot better. So that should stop the bleeding. Get this thing all back together. But, I mean, the coil's got to go temporary patch all right a couple leaks fixed pressurized dryer changed evacuation done last thing i'm doing is cleaning the coil and then we'll get this thing back online and going Let's get him a quote for a new coil see how long this repair lasts you know it might last a day it might who knows but the coil has to get changed but we just stopped the bleeding and uh, then we're gonna get this coil washed out now that the weather's hot. Nice day up here in the mountains. That old church right there. There's cinematography on YouTube for HVAC right here, NorCal Refrigeration. If you've liked this video, please hit the like button. If you haven't yet subscribed, please subscribe. There's a little clicker down there. You can just click and subscribe. You can hit the bell for notifications. And I'll see you guys on the next video. Uh, I'll, oh, also, I'll put a link in the description to the video of where I lost my SuperTech badge when I changed out that coil downstairs. And, we'll, and I'll put the date on there too. And I'll put a link for that video. So you can just click the link and go watch that video. So a lot of you guys will remember that from back in the day. And we'll see how old that coil is, boned by bone, bony maroney, and see how long it lasted. All right, I looked the coil up seven years ago on that video, and, it, and the video is called um, Super Tech Badge Got Pulled or something like that. It'll be in the description. I'll have a link for it in the description. Go ahead and watch that video. It's a good video. I thought it was really good. Um, yeah, you can hear the air conditioners on in the in the vagina. The vagina's got air conditioning, and so seven years—that's about par for the course for an evaporator coil to start leaking. These days, in the olden days, the copper was thicker. Um, the coils lasted, so man, time goes by fast. I can't believe that was seven years ago. Um, and that's when I did that that change out on that coil so yeah, yeah check that video out enjoy it and we will see you on the next video